What is happening, guys? Welcome back to part 23. So, continuing on, uh, now that we have taken out the Owl Father version, you're going to want to head on over to the Wedding Cave door. This is at Ashina Depths. Additionally, if you ended up using some rice, of course, make sure to go back on by to the Inner Sanctum and get more rice. And, more importantly, now that she has become a uh, vessel, we get fine snow instead. Which is just chilled silvery rice. It's, it's basically rice, except it's even better. So, just even more healing coming our way. Uh, anyway, we uh, heading right on through here. Got everything we need, so we're going to Fountainhead Palace. So, go over here, pray, and get ready for probably one of the weirdest cutscenes I have ever seen in a game from Miyazaki. I'm not up to date on Japanese lore, but can someone explain to me why the giant rope man has a big old log for a dick? I just don't get it. Rope man really need a dick? Who, what is he using his dick for? Why does he need it? One of the great mysteries of Miyazaki. Run on down the big ropey arm. Grab the pellet. And next up, have the true monk. So, you're probably familiar with the uh, the actual corrupted monk. This guy was a Gamescom demo. Uh, a lot of the early demo footage was shown fighting this dude. So before we tackle him, of course, enhance your attack power since we knocked out Owl Father. And then as for this fight, a couple things we're going to put on. Uh, so this is a three-phase fight. Um, despite that, I think it's probably one of the easier fights. All we really need is the uh, Okinaga's Flame Vent. I don't need oil, but, you know, I like using oil just to really make sure. Uh, so what's going to happen here is the first phase is going to be identical to the Corrupted Monk we already fought, just minus the snaps. So you can really just beat his ass. Um, I would suggest not using your shit yet, just strictly whoop him. Uh, phase two, we're going to jump right up to that tree. He's going to appear in the middle of the bridge, and we can death blow him instantly to get rid of phase two. Phase three is about the same, except a centipede's going to come on out of him. It'll vomit up stuff that inflicts terror, so watch out for that. But other than that, oil flamethrower for an easy clap. So, let's head on in. As you can see, literally, the exact same moveset of the other monk. Oh! Ah! Pressed the wrong button there. Uh, you can jump off this bridge, it's just something to be aware of. 
So after you kill him, rope on up. Right here. As soon as you can lock on, jump. Death blow. Phase two done. Hit him with that. Oh, I went a little too early with it. See, he now has an additional sweep and he likes to spit out snakes. But you can already see just how much damage we got in from the uh, oil flamethrower combo. So, same shit. And it really messes him up. Ooh. Ooh. Being a little aggressive here, man. Alright, I'm going to have to ask you to stop this. Ow! Why did I not do the recovery dodge? There we go. That's what I was waiting for. Enjoy that. Trying to piss me off, Mark Man. And if you had it whiffed a uh, flamethrower like I did right at the start. You can see right here, he'll be, uh, well, you biggies basically just kill him with the flamethrower. Otherwise, a couple of basic attacks is all you need. Give him the big boop. Immortality severed. So yeah, all in all, a pretty easy fight, uh, especially when you're approaching it from the perspective of using the flamethrower. And with the dragon's tally board, we can now get all kinds of goodies from all of the merchants. Uh, in particular, merchants will now be selling eel liver, divine confetti, snap seeds, scrap iron, black gum powder, and a few other upgrades that vary between each merchant. Go on in here. Uh, enhance our attack power again. Rest up. I'm gonna move forward from here. Well, first I'm gonna move my notes. Alright, so the first thing I know you're probably thinking now the Rat Fountainhead Palace, you see all this water and you're like, I wanna go fishing. I wanna get these carps. I wanna dive on in. And I can understand it. And trust me when I say you don't wanna do it right now. And I'm gonna show you why. So, for the time being, there is a dude. You can see him, kind of. He's up right there on that, uh, that Sakura tree. But if you get in the water, start swimming, see what happens here. Giant lightning soccer balls kicked at your face. So, don't go into the water for now. You're just going to have a bad time. Uh, now, these guys are what are known as nobles. Now, they're not very hard to kill. But that little thing you saw, what they're essentially doing right there is draining your vitality. And what's important about this is if that goes off, you're basically dead. Um, it will drop your health down to what it was before you got any upgrades. It'll also make it so that you can't resurrect. So if they get that off, you will die. Like, no questions asked. Anyway, so we got this one. There's one more ahead, and then there's another one behind a folding panel. Fortunately, they are uh, very, very easy to kill. Now we're going to go outside to grab up a light purse. Wish I wrote down exactly where outside was for that light purse. Probably right here. Yep, there we go. Now we're going to make our way up to the rooftops. So uh, this area is filled with nobles. There's those kinds of nobles. And then there's the nobles who will fight back. And we're going to call them long necks. Just because they have these, uh, well, they all have long necks. But these ones, you, the, that the necks are a lot more pronounced. You can see them. Uh, 
Sabi Maru. If you can, uh, upgrading Sabi Maru is actually pretty nice for this area because it messes these guys up. Uh, so there's three different long necks on the roof, and then one by the water down there guarding a grave axe. I mentioned Sabimaru messes them up, but we're going to be aiming to stealth kill the majority of these guys. The bow ones in particular are pretty irritating if you uh, give them a chance. Fortunately, they have like zero situation awareness. They just stand around. Yeah, see, see how fast he got poisoned? I didn't even have time to go through the full Sabi Maru combo. Go on and pick up the lump of grave wax. Uh, let's see. Head back and kill the archer on the lower roof. Huh? That's right. Eh. Sneaky boy hiding here. All right, let's see. Lower roof, then head to the tree and take out the swordsmen. So the swordsmen are right below us. You can see one there, another one over there that's pathing. I think the craziest thing about this is this isn't even the... Uh, the, like, Super Sabi Maru. This is just the Tier 2. So anyway, after that, we got this guy hiding here. Run on in. Off my vitality. The balloon of wealth. Um, let's see. Grave Wax, head inside. Got the balloon. Alright, so continuing onward, there's gonna be a shard up above. And then we're going to be running along this wall for a second here. Jump up to kill other long necks that are up there. After that, we're going to kill the weird lightning dog things. They're divine dogs. I don't know what they are exactly, but regardless, they still die to a single shuriken. So. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. You're fast, man. Oh my god. Please don't. No! Ah! Alright. Now for the lightning doggos. See them right here. Uh, in particular, if you have the gouging top, there's a good chance you could get multiple doggos. Single hit. So take those dogs out. Ill liver. More dogs. See, there's an idol right over there. We're going to get that in a second, but not just yet. Whoop. Back into cover. All right, so let's see. Two long necks. Kill the lightning dogs. Guarding an eel. More dogs near the Yash Sugar, which we just got. We got an Ungo and a heavy purse by the Sakura trees over in the water. So let's go over that. More lightning dogs. Grab the Ungo. Grab the heavy purse. Uh, and then we're going to go back into the room. There's two lightning doggos and a long neck that's guarding an animantite. So. That. Oh, get over here, lightning doggo. And boom. Cleared it on out. So, this next area gets a little bit trickier. So, as soon as you go in, uh, once we round this corner, there's another noble waiting for us. So run up, hit him. This area has a lot of nobles. Talk to this lady. 
Oh, so it's be, just be careful, you know, they're craving the vitality of youth, they can't help themselves, they want nothing more but to sap away from it. And the courtyard in particular is filled with these dudes. So anyway, best go around it. Grab the bite down. Gotta run. Got a whole pattern here. We're gonna kill this one. We're gonna kill this one. Here and grab the Yako sugar. Back inside, around the corner for another one. Down to the end of this to grab the yellow gunpowder. that this guy was guarding. Let's see. Our notes again. All right. So, what we're going to do here is go quickly and rope up above. Now, as you saw right there, there is another one coming along with some guys. And we're going to get him in a second. But first, we're going to drop down here, grab this grave wax. We're going to kill this one. One last one to deal with. They are looking. Here, like they reset their uh, search path. But anyway, so he is being guarded by uh, two of the swordsmen. And what we're going to do here is use good old Puppeteer to basically grab one of those swordsmen. And then that way they're going to run around this area uh, knocking out nobles for us, which will make things a lot easier. Chill right here. First swordsman. Noble and the second swordsman. Dead. Now this guy, we just want him to go kill everything. Come on, go. Go, oh, run. Do it. Kill them all. Once he gets close enough, he should just run out, out there on his own. There we go. Good boy. Alright, so now that he is busy doing stuff, let's go over here. Grab that real quick. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Kill spray all the nobles. and then... Alright, so yeah, now that... We'll just give it a second here while he's going around killing them. We're gonna help a little bit, but there's quite a few nobles, so... Gotta go fast. Let's see two dudes over here. Use uh, spears as well. Oh, looks like he didn't do a very good damn. Oh, damn, man. Oh, whatever. We will uh, lure them over. Just like the other ones, Sabu Maru just shreds the shit out of these guys. See, there's another one right on the other side here. But for now, we're going to grab up some loot. So we got uh, adamantite. Pop this bad boy off. Fine grass. Uh, and then there is also a uh, pellet. And it should be it for now. So run on back over to here. Grab the confetti. Up ahead, we have a uh, elite. So these guys are a good bit stronger than the other ones. On top of that, he's guarding another one around the corner. So 
Go in and oh man, that was close. You can see there's another one right there. Ooh. Ow! The lightning. You can lightning counter those, by the way. General Sabumaru is more than enough to make quick work of them. Oh, grab all the goodies. As you can see, these guys just poop out upgrade mats, lump of fat wax, adamantite scrap, all that goodness. So anyway, dive down here, and then come back up. Treasure carp scale. Treasure carp scale. True. Treasure carp scale. And last, but certainly not least, Water of the Palace. Now, you can take this Water of the Palace to the dude that is back um, at Mibu Village, and he will actually give you a buttload of carp scales. So we're going to do that real quick here, since we just finished up with this area. After all them run on out, and here you go. Got a new idol, nice and deep into Fountainhead Palace. Um, we're going to go ahead and knock this stuff out. So I would actually suggest going to the Wedding Cave door as opposed to the Watermill. It's just a little bit faster in terms of running back over there. Slide right on under. Back to the shinobi door. I don't know if I can talk to him. Look in the pot. Please, please accept us. Give him the water. Oh, hello. Hmm? Here you go. Take this. Oh my god, this is my good shit. Oh, I've been craving it. So you get some dragon spring sake. And then, once again, last idol. Just let this dude lap at that bowl like the dog he is. And we're going to come back. And we're going to take our carp scales. Almost got living for us. Can't wait, man. So you can see, he's transformed into a noble. Go ahead and kill him. And zoop. Five carp scales coming on in. So now head on back. Um, as for the next area, we actually have a, a boss pretty much right at the start. So... Um, I'm thinking, just look at my notes here real fast. That, yeah. So we got to go through the whole flower viewing area, and then the pot noble, and then the palace grounds. It's it's a pretty large area. This whole area will probably take uh, two, maybe three episodes. But since we already knocked out the most of it, and we're through most of this episode's time, instead, I'm going to go see if we can take on these guys. Now the thing is, they, they, they give a nice chunk of XP, they're not giving like boss XP, you know, you're not getting anything in the thousands. Uh, but despite that, this is definitely a really challenging fight we're about to do. Um, what I'm going to try and do here is a stealth approach. I'm up. There we go. Oh, God. It's on fire and poisoned. Oh my god! Oh. Thankfully these guys can't really swim, so we got that going for us. But they're still no joke. I mean, just the sheer the sheer damage output of these guys is honestly uh it's it's frightening. 
that's what that the whole red eyes thing is. The red eyes is like a uh, you know they're similar to the raging ogre in the sense that they are just super beefed up. Oh my god! Like honestly, they're <laughs> they're probably harder than most bosses. Oh. Oh my god, dude. It's ridiculous. If we can just kill one, we can probably take out the other one fine, but... Oh my god! You guys turn around? Will you just turn around so I can, uh... So close yet. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Please stop. <laughs> I know this looks really bad, but I promise I'm not usually this terrible. Alright, well, we're gonna try and uh, lure him on over instead. Need to separate them. That's the, the big thing here. I need to get a uh, punk bro away from other bro. Here we go. Got my res back. Oh, we don't have our res back. Oh, man. Alright, well. With that being the case, we're actually going to reset. We got Academic's red lump off of him, and then once we take this guy out, we're going to get another lump. But, you guys are crazy, man. Like, literally, I, I first attempted the owl father form, but I'm getting my ass just kicked around by these dudes. Which is pretty insane. They are... They do some serious work. God damn. I don't even want to imagine how bad it would be to have to fight big guy over here. So another red lump. Round red lump found inside the body of a red-eyed... Assume to gain red eyes. And reduce flinching from enemy attacks, but also prohibits the use of resurrection. Red mass will not mold or wither, and though it does no harm, it will likely remain in the stomach even after the potency has worn off. Now to take a look at the other one we got. A round red lump found inside the body of red-eyed Dojin. Same thing. Consumed to gain red eyes and reduce flinching of enemy attacks. Also purpose resurrection. Dosaku and Dojin were the quintessential master and disciple, often when pursuing the ideal self. 
one need only look within. And that wraps up their chain. So, kind of a uh, sad ending for them. But, I mean, honestly, the whole reason for us doing doing that chain is I will take three grave or three wax and two grave wax over a uh, Jizo statue any day of the week. Like, 100%, no questions asked. Give me the upgrade mats. Uh, so anyway, well, at least until everything's upgraded. Then a Jizu statue is pretty nice. But anyway, um, moving forward for the next episode, we are going to be uh, kicking things off from the flower viewing stage. Uh, before that, I'm going to actually head on back to town, probably look at what upgrades I'm, I'm getting close to and pick those up. So either way, stay tuned, and I'll catch you guys soon enough with more.